Hi there, welcome back. Today we are going to use citric acid in our soap. Now the reason why we use citric acid is to reduce soap scum if you've got hot water with lots of minerals and metals in it. And it will also reduce chances for DOS if you have uh, problems with DOS as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show you how to calculate how much citric acid to add to your soap how to add it to your soap and then also how to calculate the amount of um, sodium hydroxide or lye that you need to um, add back to your the recipe because the citric acid is going to uh, neutralize some of your lye so we're going to make a hundred percent coconut oil soap today that you can use as a laundry soap or you can use it to wash your dishes with but let's just move over to the table and i'm going to show you how to do it Okay, I had a request from one of my subscribers to include everything, so today I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to include how I measure my uh, ingredients and how I'm going to, the order that I'm going to put everything together and so on without fast forwarding, forwarding through it. I will most probably only fast forward when I start to use the stick blender to bring things to trace. But this is specially then for beginners. I will put timestamps in my video, then you can skip over this part if you really don't want to see it. But yeah, okay, let's see what we're going to use in today's recipe. Now for today's soap, it's going to be a dish soap. I'm going to use 100% coconut oil, so it's going to be a single oil soap this time. I'm going to use distilled water, obviously my acoustic sauna, and then our lovely citric acid. Now the reason we're going to use citric acid in our soap is this is especially if you live in a hot water area. Um, citric acid by itself is not a chelator, but when you add it to your sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, it will react with it and then you get sodium citrate or potassium citrate. Now those two are chelators. Now what that does is um, it reduces your chances for DOS and it um, reduces uh, scope um, soap. Uh, my tongue is tying there. It reduces the soap scum in your water water about binding to dissolved minerals and metals that's in your water. So it actually makes your soap just works better. Now um, the dosage that you're going to use in your oil is um, one, from 1% 1 to 3% maximum per 100 grams of oils that you've put in your recipe. Now, um, I prefer to use between 1% to 2%. Um, when you go to 3%, it's still starting to... Okay, it's not really always doing it, but it can cause white crystals similar to soda ash on your soap. Um, it's also harmless. It's just cosmetical. You can wash it off afterwards. So, um, you can go to maximum 3%. More than 3%, then you're going to um, stand chances that you, your soap might not... Get to trace properly and so on so rather stay one to two percent is a safe amount three percent maximum now when you are using so um, cit um cit citric acid citric acid 10 grams of citric acid is going to neutralize um 6.24 grams of um, so um sodium hydroxide or if you are using potassium hydroxide then 10 grams of citric acid will neutralize 8.42 grams of um, potassium hydroxide so you need to keep that in mind when you um, formulate your recipe because for every 10 grams of citric acid you use in your recipe you need to add um, sodium hydroxide extra sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide here now i've taken 100 grams of oil i've made my recipe for 100 grams of oil so that i can use two percent of citric acid in here so that will be 20 grams of citric acid um, what i'm going to do is i uh, dissolved it already um, in a little bit of water so if i use 20 grams of citric acid i will at least use 40 grams of water here and just dissolve it properly beforehand you can actually just add it to your lye water before you add the lye as well so I just dissolved it beforehand I don't need to measure that out. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do it a little bit differently. My videos usually I skip through the measurement part and so on. But I've got a, a subscriber. Oh, sorry. I've got a subscriber that requested that I don't skip all this stuff because there are beginners out there and they would actually like to see all these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put timestamps in my video so you're welcome to skip over this measurement part if you like and then you can just move to the end where you are interested again 
So what I'm going to do here is I've got my 100% coconut oil. Now because this is going to be a dish soap, I made the um, super fat only 1%. Now most people will do 0% super fat for this. I like to have a little bit of a buffer zone that I know it's not going to end up acoustic. So the amount of oil that I need to use here is 634 grams. So I'm just going to switch on my scale here. There's my container, tear it, get it to zero and we're going to go 634. There we go on our wells. Oh, just one single well in this case. Okay, and just need to wipe my spoon. Okay. I like to wipe everything off as we go. I've got quite a bunch of these cloths. It's the easiest way for me to clean my stuff is just wipe it off and then afterwards I can wash it with warm soapy water, no problem. Now you will see my coconut oil is a sludge, it's not 100% um, melted here. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to use the heat transfer method where I'm going to add my light to my water. And while it's still warm, I'm going to add it to my oils. So the heat from that will melt the oil all the way. Um, heat transfer method works excellent if you do not have electricity or a means to really heat your oils so i prefer that it's one of the methods that you use the least amount of equipment and so on so i'm just going to put my oil to the side there then my next little container here is for my water just going to zero it in there now the amount of liquid required i'm working one to uh, one to two um, uh, ratio here yeah. so it will be 231 grams of water but I've got about 40 grams here as well so I'm just gonna go for about 190 grams here just to reuse that 100 okay 202 now your water amounts not really that important that it be exactly on the dot Ah, let's go for 197. Okay, I'm also going to add my dissolved citric acid here. So I took 20 grams of citric acid, about 40 grams of water, and there we go. I'm just going to add it there. 230, okay, 200. I'm bumping my table here. Okay, 247. It's about 10 grams more than. The soap calculator worked out for me, but 10 grams is about 2 teaspoons, it's really not a lot. So there we go there, and now we have to get our sodium hydroxide here. So what happened here is my sodium hydroxide should be 115,59 grams. Okay, correction, I've been lying to you. I didn't use 2% in this recipe, it's only 1%. So it's going to be 10 grams here so i've used 10 grams of citric acid here and i'm going to add four grams of sodium hydroxide extra here just to um, make up for the amount that the citric acid is going to cover i will put all the um, calculations and stuff in the description box as well so you can go and check it out and calculate your own amount regarding to what your recipe requires there okay so the amount that I'm going to use here 
is the sodium hydroxide is 115 plus 4 so it's 119 grams all right there we go so we've got our sodium hydroxide now measured out just an example there Off. Okay. Put our oil. Switch these two around. Okay. Now, when you add your sodium hydroxide, remember this is an acid or acidic solution now because of the citric acid, and we've got the sodium hydroxide here, um, which is alkali. So this is gonna fuzz. Oh, yeah, fizz. I think fizz is the correct one. Just gonna get my face mask on here because it's going to give off some fumes gloves and goggles so I'm going to add it slowly here just to give you an idea you don't need a thermometer but just to show you this is going to be 19.2 Round about, and let's start to add some of our sodium hydroxide here. It's making a grumbling sound a little bit. Okay, this time it didn't really fizz that much because I only used 1% of citric acid. There you can hear the grumbling now. But be careful if you are using more than 1%, if you go to 2 to 3%, the reaction is going to be much stronger there. So make sure you've got a big enough container that if it starts to fizz and bubble up a bit that there's more than enough space for it to contain that there. Ninety-seven degrees. I'm just going to stir this until it is clear. Let me see if it's safe to take my mask off. I don't think you're going to hear me properly with it. The reason why I like it to wait a little bit until it goes clear, even if I do heat transfer method, is just to make sure uh, that you can see that there's no light crystals, anything left in there anymore. That everything is dissolved. You can also use a strainer and just pour your liquid through the strainer. I've got a little speck of a hokuki there or something. This is like a really tiny little bug. Sorry, buddy. It is literally nearly microscopic, yeah. Six, ninety-seven, round about there. It's starting to clear up a little bit. Well, that clears there. The mold that I'm going to use today is individual molds. Um, 
coconut oil soap um, it hardens quite a lot it's a really really hard soap so if you you need to actually cut it if you do a bar soap you need to cut it while it's still warm otherwise it goes so hard it's just going to crumble and break apart now i'm a little bit uh, tension deficit disorder my son tells me i'm like a mouse on um tick um, i'm not even sure it's tick do you call it tick in english but anyway i'm all over the place so for me i forget about my soap making and then when i get back to it it's way too hot so i'm going to use individual molds then even if i forget about them i can just pop them out later now this 100 grams recipe is a little bit large for this one so i'm going to make some heart shaped dishwashing soaps as well so i'm going to use my silicon molds here just keep in mind if you make a bar soap you will have to cut it while it's still warm otherwise you're not going to be able to cut it at all okay there we go on camera it still seems a little bit milky but it's actually quite clear i can see there's no light crystals in there at all so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add it to my oil let's just see the temperature here is still it's 96 oh, so it started to cool down the oil just for entrance there it's 20 so i'm just gonna add this to my oil we're back with our stearic acid soap so this is the soap that we added the stearic acid to it hardened up very nicely unmolds very easily no problem to unmold it here there we go it's got a little bit of a lighter it's not really a layer on top of it although it does seems like it made a little bit of soda ash like here on top and then i've got my heart here as well okay and there we go so this is the top side a little bit of soda ash it could be the stearic acid as well because the stearic acid also looks very similar so and there's the back sides i'm quite happy with them so and that's all that there is to it so if you've got hot water or if you've got minerals and metals and stuff in your water and your soap is making soaps come you can do this and if you've struggled with those the those dreaded orange spots then you can use stearic acid as well to help to counteract that. So, happy soaping until next time.